Hey everyone and welcome back. In the previous video, we have learned how to create our application from scratch. And right here, I'm going to start uh, creating my socket clients. So I'll create a new Kotlin class and call it socket clients. This class is going to be injectable. So I'll mark it as inject and create a constructor for it. But here I'm going to need my JSON object, but I haven't created uh, the model to provide my JSON object. To do that, I'll create a new class inside my utils package called app module and annotate it as module and it's going to be installed inside singleton components as class and we will have a function to provide our context and the value is going to be context of type context and it's going to return our context and the next one I'm going to provide my json object so i'll write the function name as provide json and it's going to return a json object the value is going to be a new json object so inside here you can see this mark that this object is being provided by dagger hills so let's go back to my second client first i'll create a companion object for my web socket which is going to be of type web socket private for sorry client and it's going to be null initially so don't forget to mark your socket client as a singleton so my main function is going to be init which will get a username as the parameter of type string inside here first I'll store my uh, username inside my socket client like this this that username and after that I'll try to instantiate uh, my web socket client using an anonymous class which will extend from my web socket client abstract class and as a URI I'll create a new instance of it and pass my local web socket address like this 10.0.2.2 and for 3000 and after that I'll implement the members like this and here we are ready to interact with our application using this web second client. Also, don't forget to connect your web socket right after you created a new instance of it, like that. But to interact with our web socket or signaling server, I do have to create my data model. Right here, I'll create my data model as a data class called data model I'll just copy and paste the data model and the type is also here inside my data model class so let's go back here uh, whenever we connect it to our web socket we want to send a login or a sign in event so using this function send message to socket it will get any using web socket and send function I want to serialize my message to a JSON object using JSON library and send it to web socket but let's wrap it inside a try catch block to prevent 
uh, the application crashes and in case of any exception cache I'll just like the reason so using this send message I want to create a data model of type sign in the username is going to be username itself I don't need any target and I'll also don't need any data for it after logging into websockets uh, it's time to transfer the data is being received from websocket server to the class that is observing our socket client to do that I'll create an interface called listener and create a function on new message received and it will have a model of type data model and right here I'll create an object of my listener so listener and it's going to be null initially let me check the type that's correct so right here I'll try to deserialize this message to my data model using JSON library like this but I'll wrap it inside a try catch block in case of any exception it's going to be null and right here I want to use JSON library from JSON and pass this message as an input and for the data model I'll just pass the data model class.java after that I'll check actually this name is being shadowed so I'll rename it to model and check if it's not null then I want to use the listener class and pass it to the higher level class that is observing my socket client and I'll pass it to this function and for persisting of our web socket in case any spike happens whenever our socket client is closed I'll create a delay like 5 seconds using my coroutine scope and launch a coroutine and delay it for 5 seconds or 5000 milliseconds and reinitialize my socket client using the username so that's why I stored my username inside my class okay that's it for our socket client in the next video we will learn how to create our WebRTC clients and other stuff about WebRTC till the next video see you everyone